Howdy! In this video, I will predict the future of MS care. It's my opinion that we will move towards a de-escalation model. If you'd like to understand my projections of where I think the field of MS therapeutics are going, stay tuned, because I'll share that starting right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between the visits. And it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. It's December 25th, Christmas morning. And what a better time than to predict the future of MS care. It's my strong opinion that as a field, we will move towards a de-escalation model. And I'm gonna use a few minutes in this video to share with you why I think that and where we're headed. Now, as many of you who follow my channel are aware, I personally disagree with the escalation model of managing MS. In brief, the escalation model involves starting out a person on a lower efficacy drug with the thought that it's more safe and watching how they do. And when that drug fails them and they have breakthrough disease, they escalate to something more potent, but maybe with a worse side effect profile. Now I've talked a lot about the escalation model and why I think that's terribly flawed. And so I'll throw links up above and I'll include links down in the description below to a few of those videos in case you'd like to check them out. But today I wanna to focus on the future. And in my opinion, the future is de-escalation. So let's jump in. For starters, I want to review facts that I know to be true. Number one, the most potent, highly effective therapies that we've ever seen in the history of MS are induction therapies. When you look at the vast clinical data, it becomes extremely apparent that using hematopoietic stem cell transplantation or using mitoxantrone or using alemtuzumab upfront as an induction model has the most bang for your buck. We see the most potent results when we apply these induction therapies upfront in the beginning. And I really feel that's not a discussable point. That is a fact. Fact number two. All of the disease-modifying therapies, whether that be the highly effective induction, the monoclonal antibodies, even the first-line injections, they all tend to work better the earlier that we use them. And I'm talking about age of the human being, not the age of onset of disease. When you use uh, disease-modifying therapy in a 30-something, it's our current belief that you get more bang for your buck than when you use it with a 60-something. Fact number three. As human beings age, our immune systems become quieter and quieter. My mentor used to tell me that MS can become more or less quiet when we reach our 80s. And in my experience, starting around the 60s, moving forward, the immune system starts to ratchet down a little bit. Now, this may increase our risks for infections and cancers, but it also means that autoimmunity, like MS, may become a bit quieter as we get older. In Fact number four, medicines that failed a human early on in their disease course can sometimes be found to be effective after induction therapy. I learned this back in the day when I used to use cytoxin to treat aggressive MS. Back then we only had injectable therapies and cytoxin. And so if someone had been on injectable therapies and had broken through and we induced them with cyclophosphamide, cytoxin, afterwards those same injection medicines seem to work better. And so, considering these four points, I submit to you that the future of MS care is in fact de-escalation. I envision a world where we meet someone newly diagnosed with MS, and I'm not talking about highly active disease, I'm not talking about aggressive disease, I'm talking about a human being with multiple sclerosis, whether that be a relatively mild case or a relatively severe case and we induce that patient with the most effective therapy that we have available to us. I'm talking about using things like Lemtrada first line. I'm talking about doing things in the future like stem cell transplantation, heavy duty induction therapy to reboot or rewire the immune response to knock it off. Proper induction therapy. Now, we've seen from the clinical trials data both in Lemtrada and with hematopoietic stem cell transplantation that many of the patients treated, at least over the next 10 years, do not require retreatment, which is kind of amazing. But there are a minority of patients that do in fact require further treatment. And the question becomes, what do you give them? 
And here's where I think the concept of de-escalation makes a lot of sense. You take this person early on in their chronologic age and early on in their disease process, and you induce them with heavy hitting medicines that reboot their immune response. After that, you place them on a maintenance type therapy. And this maintenance type therapy does not necessarily need to be a heavy hitting monoclonal antibody. You might in fact be able to use a so-called low efficacy medicine to maintain a mild suppression of their immune response for years to come. Hence the concept of de-escalation. Hit hard up front and then maintain with a safer long-term medicine that a person could stay on chronically. And there you have it. My prediction for the future of MS care, de-escalation. I think it will be more effective in treating MS and I think the risk benefit makes much more sense. You take the risk up front, you have a massive reboot, and then you subject the patient to lower risk medicines which can maintain them for years to come. Thank you for listening to my opinion and taking a moment to learn about MS with me. And I, of course, would love to learn from you. The question of the day is what do you think of this concept of de-escalation? Does it make sense to you? Are you in agreement? Or do you think I'm off my rocker? Please leave your answers in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see further from me, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. You can do that by hitting that little red button. And until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying thank you for learning about MS with me and take care.